Please open to page 237 in your student journal. Today we're going to continue factoring some polynomials. Last section we learned how to factor a quadratic trinomial where we had an x squared, we had a term with x to the first, and then we had a constant. We always had three terms and we found ourselves a pretty nice shortcut to get factored form. Now today we're going to be looking at some special binomials. The binomials we're going to be looking at are known as the difference of two squares. When we hear difference, we should think subtraction. And when we have squares, we want to think of perfect squares. Now the phrase difference of two squares, we did see that. We did hear about that in section 7.3. So let's just take a second and refresh. If you look on page 215 in your student journal, on page 215 in your student journal, I just took a little shot of it right here, what should be in your notes on page 215. After we distributed or we did our boxes or our foil for each of A, B, and C, we were left with what we call the difference of two squares. Difference meaning subtraction. Two meaning that we only had two terms. We had binomials left. And then by squares we meant perfect squares. Numbers such as 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. And then if we're dealing with a variable, perfect squares had even exponents. So now we have to figure out how are we going to get from a difference of two squares back up to that factored form. Remember, our factored form, we have our two sets of parentheses. We have a binomial in each set. So if we recall from 7-3, we ended up with that difference of two squares when we started with the same terms in the parentheses except one was plus, one was minus. Same terms in the parentheses, x and 4, x and 4, except for one was plus and one was minus. 3x and 1, 3x and 1, except one was plus and one was minus. So now if we start with a difference of two squares, we know our factored form has to have the same two terms in each binomial, but one is plus and one is minus. So let's take that idea back to page 237 and let's try to factor our difference of two squares. Now you might be thinking, well, how do I know it's a difference of two squares? So let's take a look at number one and let's check and make sure. Difference means subtraction. We have subtraction number one. Two, meaning two terms, one, two. Now the other thing I have to check, are those two terms squares? Are they perfect squares? We have a variable with an even exponent so s squared is a perfect square. The exponent is even. And now, do I know 49 is a perfect square? If you're not very good with perfect squares, what you can do to check is take the square root. The square root of 49 is 7. If you take the square root of a number and it works out perfect, no decimals, no fractions, then you do have a perfect square. So again, difference meaning subtraction, two meaning we have two terms, squares meaning are they perfect squares? If you have a variable, its exponent needs to be even. If you have a number, simply take its square root and see if it works out perfect. So we hit all of our criteria in number one, so that means I'm going to have two binomials. One's going to be plus, one's going to be minus. And now we have to figure out what's going to go in those. 
To get s squared, I need s and s. To get 49, well, I just took the square root, so I know that 7 squared gives me 49. So 7 and 7. Same two terms, s and 7, s and 7, but one's plus and one's minus. So if I wanted to distribute or do boxes or do FOIL to check, I would end up with s squared minus 7s plus 7s minus 49. So the same thing would happen that we saw back in section 7.3. Those two middle terms are opposites. They do cancel each other out. We're left with s squared minus 49. Now your final answer though is that factored form, those two binomials being multiplied together. That's what we're going for. Let's check out number two. Let's make sure that we have a difference of two squares. Again, difference means subtraction. Two means I have two terms. I have a binomial. And squares means that I have perfect squares. So I do have subtraction. I do have two terms. My first term, I have an even exponent. So I do have a perfect square. 81, if I'm not sure, I pop square root of 81 in my calculator. Comes out to be 9. So I do have a difference of two squares. So that means my two binomials, one will be plus, one will be minus. To get t squared, I have to do t times t. And then to get 81, after I took the square root, I learned the square root of 81 was 9. So we're going to have 9 and 9 to get us our 81. Let's take a look at number 4. We need to check to make sure we have a difference of two squares. I know you're thinking, Miss Scala, it's kind of the theme of the section here, and you're right. But later on, when things are all mixed up for you, you need to be able to identify being able to need to do a difference of two squares versus just finding a greatest common factor. So we need to make sure that we know how to identify that difference of two squares. So in number four, I have subtraction. I have one, two terms. Now I have to make sure both those terms are perfect squares. I have the number 4. If I'm not sure, 4 is a perfect square. Square root of 4 is 2, so 4 is a perfect square. g squared, the exponent is even, so I do have a perfect square. 25, square root of 25 is 5, so I do have another perfect square. So now that my checklist is all met, I know I'm going to have two binomials, one plus, one minus. To get my four, I need to do two times two. To get the g squared, g times g. To get 25, five times five. What I would like you to do here is take a pause and try out number five for me, please. In number five, make sure you did your checklist. And I'm going to put the checklist off to the side. Do you have subtraction? Do you have just two terms? And are both terms perfect squares? Perfect squares would have an even exponent. Or take the square root, and you don't get a decimal. So in number five, let's go down our list. Subtraction, check. One, two terms, check. Perfect squares. 36, if I'm not sure, I take the square root. 
and I get 6. h squared, my exponent is even, so I have a perfect square. 121, if I'm not sure, take the square root, and I get 11. Once my checklist is complete, I know I need two binomials, one plus, one minus. To get 36, I'm going to take 6 times 6. To get h squared, we're going to have h times h. And to get 121, 11 times 11. So there's our difference of two squares. The only other thing I want to look at in this section, I just want to take a little bit of time. If you turn to the next page, page 238, I just want to do just a little quick refresher from last lesson. Just want to look at number 13. Now we see we have our trinomial from last time, x squared, x to the first, and then our constant. So just a refresher, we want to find two numbers that when we multiply them together we get 64, and when we add them together we get 16. Remember you can make a table if you need to, listing out the factors of 64 and what they would add together to get. Two numbers that will multiply to give me 64 and add to get 16. 8 times 8 will work, because an 8 plus 8 will give me 16. So we did our two sets of parentheses for our binomials. To get x squared, we need x and x. And then the two magic numbers that will work are 8 and 8. Now the reason why I wanted to do this one is I know with the last lesson, we didn't have any where the two magic numbers actually came out to be the same number twice. So sometimes that does happen, and when it does, how you'll see it written, since we have the same thing times itself, we would write x plus 8, and then we would put a squared. So when it happens that you're factoring your trinomials and you get the same number to put in for your binomial, write it as that binomial squared. Let's take a look at one more. Let's look at number 15. Now I know sometimes when we get the bigger numbers, we need to multiply to get 169. We need to add to get negative 26. Sometimes when you get a bigger number, maybe it happens to work out that you're going to need the same number twice. If you have a larger number and you're having trouble thinking of the factors, try taking the square root. If you get a larger number as your constant, try taking the square root. If it works out to be one of our perfect squares, see if that number is going to work for you as your two magic numbers. Now in this case, positive 13 didn't work, but if I make them negative, now negative 13 plus negative 13 will give me negative 26. So again, when you have those larger numbers, maybe try taking the square root you might get the number that you need. To get r squared, r and r, my magic number was negative 13 twice. So really, I just need to write it once and then square it. Write it once and then square it. Again, I just want to take a little bit of time today to show you what happens if your number comes out to be the same twice. That's OK. We just didn't see that in the last section, so just something a little new for us. This time what I'd like you to do is go ahead and try out your progress check for today. Use any of the notes you need on it. Ask me any questions you need. Check it in with me when you're finished.